G'day everyone, it is Bowie Jane and Jess Bomb from Babes Behind the Beats. We are back in the house, or shall I say out of the house? Thank you are out of the house. You specifically are now out of the house. <laughs> oh my God, thank God I'm out. We got Bowie Jane out, fresh out of the Big Brother house. Big Brother 25, you just finished third place, which is fucking massive. Yeah, Dude, crazy. Huge. Like, congrats, first of all. Yeah, thanks so much. Um, well, I, 100 days in the house. I, I still can't believe I have so many questions for yeah. you. I, I feel like everyone probably has a lot of questions and I, you might have answered all these a lot, but I just, oh, I watched no. it. You know what I mean? Like, me and Lauren straight up watched all the episodes and even if I was on tour, like, I would still catch up like my feeds on TikTok. I had my algorithm so it was just Big Brother. <laughs> so it was like, Big Brother clip, Big Brother clip. So if I missed anything, it would show up on TikTok. Yeah. But I even watched the live feeds and everything. No, it's so funny. So when I got out of the house, I saw Jess probably what, Wait, two the nights? Next day it was something? like two days after, maybe? Yeah, and she was like, oh my God, I've been watching the live feeds. <laughs> blah, 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 blah. And I was like, what? I didn't think you'd be watching the I was going to say, did feeds. you not expect me to watch it? I mean, I did, but I didn't think the live feeds. You didn't like, think I'd go that deep? Yeah, and so Jess got obsessed, apparently. Okay, listen. To the I, point where Lauren said, you can't, I think you've got to draw the line at watching her sleep. <laughs> yeah, well, because we'll get to that part because you're not supposed to sleep in the house and I caught you on the live feed sleeping. Uh, wow, oh, see how me. creepy I sound? This is why it's such a crazy, crazy thing that you were on this show because, okay, just for anyone who's who hasn't watched it, like I, because I never watched it before. This was mm. literally like the first time I have watched Big Brother because you were on it. Yeah. And I did not know really what the point of the game was. I kind of knew obviously that someone comes out at the end as the winner. Yeah. Um, but yeah, you're competing every week and you're trying to win what's called the head of household. That's right. And you want to avoid getting on the block, which is where they put two people as uh, who would be uh, the evicted guest, one of which would be the evicted guest. Yep. So they'd be voted out. So you're basically, it's for anyone who's watched Survivor, it's like Survivor, but in a house because you're making alliances right. and Pe also trying to keep people close. People don't realize that, that it's, it is very similar to Survivor in yeah. the alliance thing, but it's way more... It's lying. It's way more lying. <laughs> I was going to say, I feel like that part of it is way more intense. Because obviously Survivor, it's like you're out in the wild. You got to find your own food, all that stuff. Like it's hard in its own aspect. Yeah. But same with Big Brother where like you you don't know who's saying what. I mean, no. you literally don't know who's lying to you. I mean, there was, you know, for, for everyone who is wa or has watched the show, you know, there was a week where Bowie got blindsided. Yeah. And I remember being pissed for you. <laughs> Like yeah, I was crying. Yeah, well, uh, as as I would have been if I, I were in the house. I was so mad, and then I was saying to the cameras, I don't know if they showed this today. I was like, oh, tell them they can fuck off and they can fuck off because we because you do these diary rooms. See, every night you get recorded, right? Um, and it's a one on one private session with the producer, but you can't see the producer. Like, oh. you just are speaking to camera, but you can hear their voice. So they're asking you questions. And so I was in, and no one, the rest of the house can't hear. Right. So I was swearing and crying. And then I was like, but tell my parents that I'm okay. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if they show that. I didn't see that part specifically. <laughs> I don't think they showed that part, but. And then I was like, you won't be able to put this on there. Fuck off. Fuck off, yeah. fuck off. And all you see is footage of blurred out and me going like yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, my God. Yeah, no, I mean, honestly, to be fair, I would have probably done the same thing. Yeah. So, But I guess let's just go back to the beginning of it, right? Let's yeah. let's treat it as if we're doing our, our interviews with our guests. Yeah. You are our guest today. You just got out of Big Brother. Yep. And um, I want to start from even, like, the process of audition. Is it an audition? How do you get on Big Brother? Yeah, so I some people are recruited. Um, but I applied through the website, put in a video, and yeah, it's as simple as that. And I got a call within a couple of days, and then it's like 400 interviews. Like, it's so many interviews to get through to Like the a end. crazy process, I'm yeah. sure, because they have to find out so much yeah. stuff about your past and everything. And you can see why, because you're in this house with people for 100 days. I can't have any... They've got crazy people in there, but like... Not with a criminal record, crazy. Right, exactly. They're like, they got to know what kind of secrets you've had <laughs> to, exactly. to know uh, if you can be on the show. Yeah. Um, okay, so you did, an, you sent in a, a tape and then how and it's long? like a one minute tape or a minute and a half. <clears throat> and I was just like, hey, my name's Bowie Jane and I'm a, I'm a DJ da, 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 and just going into my whole story and pulling out all the things that are interesting about my life. The contradiction of me, you know, having been an attorney in the past and all right. that kind of stuff. So, yeah, putting all that in and being Aussie, I think maybe was good well because you well. were the first Australian on US Big Brother, yeah, as well, right? Yep. So that's a huge thing too. Yeah, first Aussie um, because you have to be a citizen 
of America to apply for CBS shows. Oh, okay. And yeah. so since you're an Aussie, you are a citizen. Well, though. now I'm dual you're dual citizen. citizen. Yeah, yeah, which came in February. So I oh, applied just in, in time. Yeah, so I applied in March, and it's getting close to cutoffs by then. Wow. So that might be why they called me straight away. Oh my god. That's and I was so in crazy. Australia, like in the bush, and the, the casting people were calling, and I was like, I can't hear you. Oh, and just like breaking up, you know. I'm like, they're drinking by the campfire, kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh my god. So wow, that's so crazy. So you did you did the audition process, then you obviously get through. What, how, like, I don't know how much of this you can talk about, but, like, do they prep you for, like, are, are you, like, okay, so two weeks before, like, I've got to get all my stuff in order? Like, how fast does it move? So you don't know you're on the show until the moment they take your phone. Like, you're, once they take your phone, you're gone. Oh, my God. So, um, so basically, you've got a bit of a – some people had more of a smooth ride than others. Mine was smooth. I felt good about the process the whole way through, whereas others were told you're in and uh, you, you're going well and then we're not going to use you and then brought on the show. Whoa. Like oh, told two weeks before. No way. Yeah, so it's all – yeah, I guess they're trying to make all the pieces work together. So, right, yeah. Yeah, so they don't they, – they do tell you that they're going to film you and you know that's probably the moment where you get your key and then you're going on the show. Mm. But at that moment, you need your bag packed. Wow. Uh, you've got they, – they sit there with you and you've got your phone so you can't tell anyone you're on the show. And then you pack your bag and then you're gone. Jeez. For maybe a week or maybe four months. For Yeah, because like, you just don't know. No. Oh, my God. Like I – I mean, I had to tell you yeah. beforehand. And I was like, dude, um, I don't know if this is going to be one week or it could be – Three or four months. Could like, be till the end of the year, yeah. which it ended up being. I mean, I, I, I kind of thought maybe that could happen, but I was like, oh, I mean, that would be lucky if that happened. <laughs> I mean, you did. You I got know, to the end. The very last day. So, so, oh my God, I just feel like I have so many questions. So sorry if this is jumping around no, a lot. But ask like, away. When you get there, your first day, like, yep. Are you like, okay, I, I know what my strategy is or are you kind of trying to still do the like, oh, let me just like meet everyone and just enjoy this process for now? Or are you automatically game mode? So, yeah, automatically game mode, but I made sure I'd watched uh, quite a few seasons beforehand. And, and I'd, so I knew what I was getting myself into. Yeah. Although this season there was way more weird stuff than other seasons, yeah. I think. Like the… Scary verse and the… And the, all those, the mother thing, yeah. Yeah. Which yeah. We'll oh, and then the about. twist. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that's right. There was a twist in this. Yeah. So basically I did heaps of prep watching that and then my plan to go into the game, which of course I didn't tell anyone, so people don't know, didn't know what I was doing, Yeah, was to make sure I didn't cause any problems in the house, get along with everyone, try and find people I could trust, build strong alliances and be in the big alliance. Usually there's a bit, two big alliances and then they knock off the strong competitors. Right. And and then the other thing was not to let them know I was an attorney. So just tell them I'm a DJ, which is my main job. But right. like, don't let them know about that because they'll vote you off for that. They can they'll, use that against you easily. Yeah, yeah they'll yeah. think I'm into strategy or whatever. Right. And then the other thing is not let them know you're too sporty. So that was my next question because we all know. Yes, you I mean, are athletic. Yes, yeah, so I do CrossFit. I'm an ex-professional tennis player. I didn't tell them any of that, obviously. Right. So yeah, I made sure for the first half of the season I threw every single comp. Yeah. But, yeah. you, but you had to do it so no one could tell you were throwing every single comp. Right. Yeah, so. Yeah. I remember actually watching one of the episodes. It was the uh, Holding On to the Wall. Yes. And <laughs> I remember I saw it. I was like. I Bowie? warned you I was going to throw it comp. So you did. Yeah. I feel like right, right when I found out. But I didn't know what that meant. Yeah. Because I didn't watch. I hadn't watched the show. So when you're telling me you're going on the show and then you were kind of saying things about like what you're, you know, what you were going to do. I was just like, uh, that means nothing to me. Yeah. And then I watched the show and I was like, I told Lauren, I was like, I'm pretty sure she did say she wanted to make sure to like throw the comps. Yeah, because what happens if you win the competition that week, you're head of household, then you choose who's nominated for eviction and then the house votes who goes out from those two people nominated. So... Yeah, so, but that means the head of household the next week can't play the competition. So it's and a real disadvantage. In my opinion, and I haven't watched enough Big Brother, I feel like when you do win HOH, you end up kind of having the target on your back for the totally. following week. Totally, because then they're like, oh, you're a good competitor. Exactly. So honestly, I was like, I loved the game that you played. Because I was like, I would probably do the same yeah. thing. You got to kind of fly under the radar as much as possible, yep. not cause any waves in the house, like just kind of make sure there were some people you could trust and make sure. And with that being said, you're also the only person that never touched the block. I never got nominated. The first time 100 days in Big Brother history, 25 years of the show. 25 years, you, that's, you made history with that. Yeah. Like, 
That's insane. Yeah. So, you know, if people want to talk smack about being a That's floater right. or whatever the fuck they call it, it's yeah. like people were like floating. And I'm like, I would be a fucking floater and I would own it. Yeah. Like, if that's what you're calling it. But you weren't even a floater because you actually, that was a strategy that you had. Yeah. And also, I was in alliances the entire time, but right. no one knew it. And then people, so basically, I was in an alliance for like four weeks. They, my whole alliance turned on me. And then um, my mate, Red, was voted out. Right. That was the back uh, door. That was the, the blind side for you. Yeah. And yeah. so I was the only person who voted for him to stay out of the whole house. Well, you and with Cam. Cameron. Yeah. So then the two of us were now outcasts. Cameron wins head of household. And then all of a sudden, we can turn things around. He then puts up the people who turned on our alliance, or in our alliance, who turned on us. And I left that alliance. And I was like, right, I'm finding new people who mm-hmm. I can trust. And that's when I joined. Corey, America, Jag, Matt. Right, and at me, that And point. Cameron a little bit, yeah. Cameron was in that for a little bit. Yeah. Until, and but then, he was floating around really, but yeah. Yeah, yeah. Well, I remember thinking that that was so crazy epic when both of you guys got, you know, because it was a blind side and I was so upset for you guys and I then Cam so won and then I was like, fuck yeah, because I knew like you'd obviously be safe and then you guys would be the ones, you were the, at, at that time in my opinion, he was closest to you yeah. and he knew that he could trust you because of the red stuff too. Yes. Like this guy didn't even vote his best friend out even though, no, that's right. you know, and so yeah. like you kind of knew that you had that trust with him. So I really was pushing for that. I was yeah. like, oh, we stick with this. And then you did make a right, a really good, you know, you made really big moves in that game when you did win head of household. Yeah. Um, and that's like, Man, that's hard. that must be hard to do. Like, did you feel like? Did you feel stressed? Did you feel yeah. anxious about making those decisions? Because that first head of household that I won, I won head of household three times. Yeah, the first one I won, I actually didn't want to win that one at that time. But or everyone I was working with had dropped out, and it was me against Felicia. So I did not want to win that because again, that would put a target on my back. Yeah, but um, but I did win that accidentally, unfortunately, because I. Got through the bloody final and then I was stuck. And Felicia made this ridiculous number for the, her answer. So I was, and you I, thought you thought you were throwing it. Yeah, you thought you were throwing <laughs> it, and then yours ended up being closer. I remember seeing your face when you won because you were like, you thought you had lost, and you were trying to do the like, oh no, and then you're like, what? <laughs> I, did they show that? Because I was I haven't watched it back, but yeah. I literally was like oh shit, I've won. This is not good. Yeah. And of course, then I'm in this bloody predicament. The whole house is coming to me. The whole house was happy that I'd won, thinking they could convince me. But I, of course, had my own plan. In my head, Sari had to go. Right, at that time. But And I didn't even know about all the secrets going on in the house. But Sari had to go because I knew she was a very strong player. So yeah. she was my target. And I also thought I wouldn't get too much blood on my hands with her because – she just blindsided me, so I didn't care. Exactly. I think yeah. it actually made a lot of sense that at that point, who you put up, I would have assumed this is who you would have put up, which was Felicia and Sari. Yeah. And that they was were the because, only people not happy that I won. And they were, because, the, yeah, they were the yeah. people that were kind of, they turned on you and they had lied to you and all that. So to me, that made the most sense. Yes, um, and my concern with Sari at the time, why she was a target for me, she had her finger in every single pie. And I used to keep seeing everyone coming back to Sari feeding her information and I was like I don't know what's going on or why they trust her so much not realizing everyone was in alliance with her but I was like everyone's feeding her information that's going to be a problem later in the game I think she has to go yeah I think that that was really smart of you and oh man it was so hard because I also like so uh, Big Brother had asked me to write you a letter for if you win HOH yeah. so anyone who watches the show knows that when you win HOH you get all these pictures you get gifts and you get like a letter from like one of your closest so you got one from your parents yep. you got one from another friend and I was the other one that had to write it and I remember I, they were like you can't say anything about her gameplay but I think I tried to like <laughs> insinuate because it was when you had gotten blindsided and I was like you know, like, stay true to yourself because you're such an honest, like, loyal friend, but also, like, do what you got to do. Oh, that yeah, was my I little. Think that was, in there. was that in there? Yeah. Because that was my little hint to be like, but also, like, don't worry about, like, yeah. turning your back on people. Cause I was trying to be like, ah, some people in there are, like, trying to fuck you over so hard. Yeah. And it was like, it, it's so hard to watch your friend on the show do that with, like, no, you have no yeah. idea what's happening. When you can see all the behind the scenes stuff. So I'm only seeing one side of the story. Yeah. Whatever's being told to me. Also, my other tactic in the house was to kind of appear like happy go lucky a lot of people think Australians are laid back and oh we're cool with everything but the reality is we just have that mannerism because we're we speak sloppy I think <laughs> but the reality is we're pretty we we can we get fired up really quick oh for sure <laughs> like so I I was just trying to play it cool and oh whatever you think who should be nominated but I had all my own opinions in my head I wasn't talking to camera saying that 
I was keeping it to myself. I didn't want to. In fact, we were told we weren't allowed to speak to the cameras. Oh. And people were doing that. Yeah, I was going to say people did that during the show. Yeah, so we were told we weren't allowed. So I, obviously, being a rule follower, followed the rules. Yeah, you didn't do any of that. Yeah, but then when I come out, people are like, meh, you were floating. I'm like, dude, you have no idea what I was doing. You have no idea. Yeah. And, that's, and you made it to top three. So honestly, jokes on that. Exactly. Like. And so what happened was so, so the only reason I changed, well, actually, because I was working with Jag, Mac, Corey in America, and which. Cameron had started talking about that Jag will have to go um, eventually. Right. And I was like, this is not good because I really want to work with Jag. And Matt, I had a feeling, especially with Jag, I thought that I could trust him going through. I thought we could really, like, at least go a fair way through the game together. Right. And so when Cameron said that to me, and he also started to distrust something that had been, that I'd said or something, he was starting to distrust me. So I was like, hang on a second, you're now not trusting me. And everyone wants you to go, you're a strong competitor. This is actually a move I could make. And it's also not much blood on my hands because the whole house wants you to go. I was going to say it was actually as much as it even hurt me because I was like, I was at that time just such a like, yeah, I was just so like, this is your guy. It made the most sense for the game because like you said, then everyone, like no one had a target on your back after you just won HOH. Exactly. Which is pretty crazy because most people who win HOH end up on the block the following week or the week after. Exactly. And so that was the other the other problem I had with Cameron was he, every time I was seen talking to him, playing pool with him, um, they were like, you two are a final two. And we yeah. were. You two are a final two. Um, if he goes up on the block, which he definitely will, I'm going to be put up as a pawn. Totally. And then We know what happens to pawns. He's going to win veto. And I, because the vetoes were fairly physical, which I could have held my own in some. I'm just not sure how it would have go. But he's a great competitor. He would have won veto. He would have been pulled off the block. I would have gone home because I'm still a strong competitor. Exactly. So I wouldn't have lasted more than like three weeks. You really played well. Yeah. So Cameron, unfortunately, had to go, but I do love Cameron. And we are mates now. Yeah. No, he's, yeah. he's really great. Luckily, I, I, also got a chance to meet him like when we got out of the house and I feel like he's just a just a he knows I mean at the end of the day you guys are playing the game yeah you're playing the game and you made moves that were just like so necessary yeah, and also right. like make you such in my opinion like an epic player yeah of this game um but yeah so so three had a household okay I kind of want to go a little bit into like so you, what, what did you miss the most, do you think, while you were in the house? Because oh. obviously you're, there's, you, if for people who don't know, like you literally, you don't have a cell phone. You don't have pen and paper to write on. Yep. You don't have television. Yep. You don't have music. You're just there with yourself and yeah. these people. And also you think you've got outside access. You do not. Like the backyard is closed a lot because they're setting uh, up um, the in the backyard, the competitions, and, and they're big setups, like right. huge amount of crew and whatever. We can't see what's going on, but we could hear some noise. But sometimes it would be closed for, like the, towards the end it was 12 days or something it was closed. My so God. we were inside, no sunlight, there's no windows, just fluoro TV lighting like this. You wake up to this lighting and full-blown air conditioning, freezing. So your skin is drying up, like... It's not healthy. No, I knew that you guys were freezing because it's like everyone was always bundled up. Yeah. And it was super bright because most of you guys were wearing sunglasses all the time too. Oh, yeah, because you're just like, and you're tired. You're so tired. That was the other thing because then you're also sharing rooms with people. Yeah. Some people are staying up. Staying, so like, so explain, like I said, like what, what was the thing you probably missed the most? The gym. The gym. I mean, in all honesty, the gym in the house was just like as big as a bathroom. Oh, not even that. Like as big as this room. So it's oh, small. a little bit bigger. So three bikes, some fifteen pound dumbbells, like pulleys, like yeah. a two pound kettlebell. So it Hello. was you didn't have access to like the equipment that you would have liked to have. Yeah. So there was that, and then um, in but when you were allowed in the backyard, there was a barbell and stuff. So I was happy when we got we we usually get two to three days in the backyard. But um, the other thing, yes, you can't whistle because of or sing because of licensing. Oh, you told me this. I forgot about yeah. that. Oh, so my God. So literally, Big Brother voice would come over and say, stop singing. I remember hearing that sometimes. <laughs> and it'd be Whistling like... Whistling is the same as humming. Oh, my God. <laughs> that's insane. Yeah, so that would be all the time. And when... Because we're on 24-7 live feeds, plus there's three produced shows a week. The 24-7 live feeds, uh, they're cutting them all the time, aren't they? Like, they're putting, like, something up when we say something we can't say. Oh, it yeah. It must be a delay of some sort. Yeah, because I, sometimes it would put up, like... Uh, pictures of like uh you know like the dogs in the kennels that like were up for adoption like they ah, had that and then they had like a, a tank cute. a fish tank fish tank yeah and so that would go up sometimes yeah so and that and what is the air conditioning yeah that oh not just you know 
you think, oh, we've got all that food in the house, but there's so much junk food. So it's mostly junk, you think? I mean, there's some healthy things, but it's like, oh, it was a struggle. So how did that work as far as meals go? It sounded like they were saying Felicia like to cook a lot. So was it kind of like a everyone for themselves, but then it turned into like some nights because you were kind of like a family in the house, it would be like family dinner t- type yeah, thing? Yeah, and apparently that's unusual, but Felicia said she liked to cook because it was some, you know, it's her own time. And, and it's something to do. Something to do, no joke. Yeah. So um, she would cook with Sari quite often and um, and sometimes Blue towards the end. But, yeah, and, and Felicia's a great cook. Like, yeah. Really, the food was excellent. So um, I, if that, I would have just eaten like freaking nothing. Like I don't care about food that much. Yeah, yeah. Like when I go to restaurants, it's got to be top notch. But quite in cooking for myself, couldn't get less. Yeah, yeah. So I was having like a bowl of grapes for breakfast. I was having protein shakes all day because we're not moving. I was like, dude, I'm going to put on weight if I bloody. You were like, I'm not actually moving my body as much as I normally yeah. would. Yeah. Wow. So, and then I'll just have whatever is at dinner. And I would always clean up because. I'm just not interested in cooking. <laughs> right. Well, I think that's great. Like you pick yeah. up, you know, like there's some people that are cooking and then you know, great, I'm going to do the dishes. Yeah, I was like, I'll be your dishes girl. So um, that was my role I played in it. Yeah. Yeah. And what else did I miss? Okay, so I didn't care about not having my phone. It might be nice to like disconnect. Yeah, it was nice. Yeah. Not having a laptop towards the end when I knew I was getting out. And we're like two weeks out and I was starting to think about, oh, shit, I want to send that song to a producer. Like, I would love to send this now so it could be ready when I got out, that kind of stuff. So yeah, yeah. not having access to all that. And not it was good to not have social media because we were obviously all being critiqued. Oh, like, yeah. There was heaps of hate. But, but there's also heaps of love, but heaps yeah. of hate. I mean, and that's just social media in general. Oh, yeah. Like, the bigger, the, the bigger audience that you're reaching you're going to be get like, that's just what it is yeah. these days. Like, you could look at a picture of Harry Styles and half of the oh, comments yeah. would be like, fuck this guy for some reason. Yeah. Someone's going to find something to not like about people. Like, that's just yeah, that's the internet. Right. And that's also the trolls on the internet that, those are the people that like to comment things are the ones that are like, yeah. the negativity. No, totally. So, like, you obviously, that's fine. I had someone, um, Emily, running my social media who did a great job. Emily so, did a good job, yeah. Yeah, and then um, I think a few people had, like, Jag had his brother running his social media. So Yeah, that's that's good to do that while you're in the house. So it's still like, you have something to come back to that it wasn't just completely like sitting there idle, like yeah. with nothing happening. It was like, okay. It was especially like me with, you know, I don't know, with my career or whatever. But yeah, it was funny. Um, at the start, apparently, in the, I haven't watched it, but I've been told about the bad things, I guess, that have happened. Apparently in the first couple of weeks or the first four weeks, they're like, she's not really a DJ. Like, Oh, I remember this. And I did, as your friend, comment <laughs> somewhere online. I think I said something like, if she's not a DJ, then I'm not a drummer. Like, because I'm just like, this is ridiculous. But it was a comment that people, uh, people who I shall not name, I guess, but everyone who watched the show knows who it is. Yeah, that's right. We're like, there's no way she's a DJ because, like, did you see when she was trying to, like, hold a beat or, like, during the, when you were had to stand, what, what was the thing you had to, pressure cooker. Oh, I the was pressure trying cooker. to stay warm. Yeah, you're trying to stay warm and they were saying that you just didn't have beat, a rhythm or oh, something. Oh, is that when they were saying, that was watching it, the cameras? Yes, watching the cameras. And oh. I was like, oh, this is some bullshit. So I didn't, I wasn't trying to be in rhythm, guys. I was freaking cold in there. Yeah. You're oh like, I'm God. just trying to jump as much as possible. I'm not trying to jump in the rhythm of whatever oh, song people no. are singing. Oh, that's um, hilarious. I didn't yeah. realize that. Yeah, so uh, that was that was one thing that was said. Oh, Yeah, so it's great because apparently they were saying, oh, we're going to search her when we get out of here and find out that she's not. A- Jokes on them. And I was like, really? I, I remember thinking to myself, I was like, I can't wait till they all get out of this house and see <laughs> and then fucking bite their tongues. Yeah, and oh, she's so dumb and whatever. You're like, yeah. Jokes on that's you. what makes me a, a, that's how I'm a criminal attorney I just I'm, dumb people just get to be criminal attorneys <laughs> no, but, and also like that means my strategy worked that you didn't realize that, they didn't know. that yeah. I was strategizing they had no idea yeah, they had exactly. no idea and then speaking of one other thing which I think again is actually amazing for you and I think you've kind of owned it, which I love, is uh, fucking Bowie Jane. Oh, fucking Bowie Jane. Fucking Bowie Jane. Jane. Actually, fucking we were Bowie at the Jane, Grove last Jane. night. Yeah. Someone yelled out, go, fucking Bowie Jane, fucking Bowie Jane. Did they? I lo- See, I'm telling you, that's going to be, it has to be like your intro to your Oh yeah, I put in my Twitter it. profile, FBJ. See, it's great. Uh, mate, I couldn't care less what the hell they were saying. You're all the laughs on you guys. But like, also, FBJ, it's like great because you've got, funny. you now have like, a na- like things that you can own <laughs> that you are like known and that it's like, it's 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 honestly good. It's yeah. a good thing. Yeah. It actually worked out to be a good thing. Yeah, so jokes and on also them. things get said in the house. So like, obviously, I didn't, I haven't watched that scene as to why she said it, but like, 
I mean, who knows? It could have been said, said as a joke, or whatever. But like, I really couldn't care less. And no hard feelings against Felicia. Could not care less. Yeah. I think it's funny. The remix is funny. The remix is pretty funny. Yeah. It's pretty good. So I kind of want to talk about the twist of the season, mm. which was that Sari Fields and Jared Fields <laughs> are, are related, but they no one obviously told Dude. you that in the beginning. They just re- introduced them as because you don't know anyone's full names, right? They're just no. It's Sari, and then there's Jared. And for those who don't know, and I didn't know who she was, but Sari is like uh, a survivor. She's been on like four survivors and one traders or something. So I didn't know this, but I. Tell you what, when I chose my room, once I heard she was on Survivor, I see people didn't realize I was strategizing from you choose your own bed, right? Mm. I followed um, her into the room or we walked together or whatever. And I made sure I was in a room with her because I thought, well, she might actually be quite a strategic player. Right. And good I, person to kind of align with it first. Yeah. So I thought I'll go in a room with her. At least I'll get some intel or whatever. So, um, yeah. So I didn't know she was a Survivor fancy pants player. Cool. Um, Definitely didn't know that Jared was her son. Are you freaking kidding me? Like that's so wild, dude. Because they were, and which makes sense now because they were in every alliance in the house. And this is what was unusual about this season, and it's because of the mother son twist that the two of them were working in different alliances. But they were in every alliance together, mm-hmm. but no one knew. So there was like four: Izzy, Suri, Jared, and Felicia, I guess. Yeah, and, and Mimi. And Mimi. Yeah, they're in every single alliance. No wonder everyone was being blindsided. Like, exactly. Normally there's two big alliances and they fight each other with some alliance, smaller alliances within the big alliances. Yeah. So, yeah, anyway, that was a freaking crazy twist. In my opinion, I was so like, People you were know, mad. well, it upset me because I was like, this is cl- such an unfair advantage. Clearly it didn't work out for them, which I actually, you know, it, it's like it didn't, it didn't work out. But, but I just felt that it's so unfair because you then you just have two players that get to be on a team, yeah, essentially. Whereas yeah. everyone else is every man for themselves. But you've got a mother son duo that are clearly going to be playing as a team, yeah. And that's just an unfair advantage in a game like that. Well, it's an it is unfair, but it's also kind of clever because it really fucked up their game. It actually did. You're like, right. You're that right. It did. Fucked up Suri's game. It did. And I don't think Jared's game would have been any different either way. Or maybe he just wouldn't have had the power in the house, so he wouldn't have been. Um, on top of the ladder so much. Yeah. But like, yeah, for Sari, she wouldn't have played the game she played if her son wasn't in the house. She, it, I think it was a disadvantage, actually. So That's true. That's true. I um, guess you, if, but, when you put it that way. But yeah. horrible. Like, I, I had a very unhappy time because of it for the first four weeks. For but, the first four weeks. Yeah. Yeah. yeah because I thought I trusted people and, yeah. And they completely blindsided you <laughs> and it was, ugh. And I kept saying... I'm here to play. I'm going to play an honest game. I'm going to find some people I really trust, not knowing that the lying is on a fucking another level in that house. Like, yeah. Literally, they just make things up. Oh, yeah. 100%. Yeah. I mean, that's that's oh, so many times it was so frustrating to watch because I would see someone saying something. And again, you you got to know that this is the game and that's what the game you're watching. But it, it yeah. doesn't it doesn't like take away from my feelings of being like, this is upsetting. <laughs> this yeah. is really hard to watch people like lie through their teeth. Like I don't straight know, to your face. I don't know why it has to be that way. Well, I guess those It's people, just the game. Guess it's the what? game. Those people didn't last. Well, and I was going to say, it's actually the ones who lasted the top three. You guys all were very honorable people, I think. Yeah. You guys kind of yeah. kept your word. You guys, there wasn't really moments where I felt like you guys really were that deceitful, like at least no. to each other. Like you guys had a very tr- like good alliance with each other. Yeah, that's right. And we had a plan. Uh, we can win comps. Let's freaking start winning the comps because um, I was like, okay, I'm going to go into the next gear now. I have people who will support me. So the idea was win – if I win HOH, who's going to make – not put me up the next week? Like, right? So I had Matt and Jag – and I, as long as they're going to win, right? Right. So I knew that Jag would probably win. Matt would win Vito. Great. Let's roll through these. And at the same time, I'm becoming closer with Jag and trying to uh, make sure that he takes me to the final two. Yeah. And uh, obviously, you know – there are a few ethical moments that we had to move through and I think I could have got to the final two if I'd suggested he do something unethical, but I thought it wasn't the right thing to do as he didn't. So, yeah. yeah. I thought you guys were very, very – that was a very respectful – Yeah, I wanted to make sure he was happy. Like I could not tell him as a friend to d- make a move and know that he was going to feel bad about it when he got out of the house. So I, I didn't want him to feel bad um, and it is what it is. That's obviously – what happens in the game? Yeah, exactly. I'm, I'm looking at my phone right now because I was like, I swear I had some other questions. 
for you because <laughs> I watched again. I watched this whole season. Dude, you did, and it was just like I, I've never, never in my life watched Big Brother before. You didn't know, even know. You know when I was wrapped to win. Because also, I was, not many people won three HOHs, right? That was the other thing. And you were also the only female who won yeah. that many times. Because, what was it, Felicia got one HOH? And Riley. And Riley. Yeah. And then you won three, though. Yeah. So then the next two I did try really hard for. So Yeah. Um, I think once you get to a certain point, like then you know you got to start playing yeah. a little harder for the physical comps and stuff. Yeah. And the last, the final competition, and it was like best of three kind of or um, oh three gosh. part. Yeah. Really difficult. Like, the competitions all season weren't that physical. I was like, dude, please give us a physical comp. This is, like, weak. Like, I'm a CrossFitter. Let's go. Yeah, it kind of looked like those ones. I was. That's why I was so surprised. I wasn't surprised because you did tell me you wanted to throw them. But I was like, this would be so easy for yeah. Bowie to win. Even the pressure cooker, I threw that one. So Yeah. But I was like, at what point do I throw it? Because no one else has dropped out yet. Mm. And we were 10 hours holding a button, right? I still In can't believe dark, that. You did freezing. 10 hours. <sighs> It's so insane. So I was like, I'm going to make a move at this point because I've stayed in long enough so it doesn't look like I've thrown it. But I also, if I stay too long, I'm going to look too determined. Mm. Um, and then they're going to go, because I, I noticed the people who stayed a long time and I was like, well, they're determined. We need to knock them off. Yeah. So. Wow. Yeah. All the those things. 24-7 gaming. It is game, 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 game. And the psychologist said to us when we got out, you know, just remember you've been in fight or flight for four months. Like just. Which is wild. Yeah. It's a wild like state of mind to be in yeah. for that long and then to just come out back into real, real world life and, and just be like and, and then just be like here you go and just like release you into the wild essentially yeah. like there you go and I was saying to you when I got out like the noise like the, there's a lot of noise compared to because um, you're so used to being in the house where it's pretty quiet yeah there's no sure. music no nothing so going to like a bar felt really jarring and also lighting in the house is so bright that Everywhere it looked so dark to me. <laughs> That's so crazy. Just like the sensory overload that yeah. happens when you get out of something like that. Yeah. That's, that no one prepares you for that. Which is wild. Yeah. That's so crazy. I mean, you do have um, psychologists you can go see. That you but, can like reach out to. But whatever. Yeah, I mean, wow. for me, yeah. But so, but yeah, hard, a little tricky to deal with. And um, Jess and Lauren looked after me the first weekend. My parents were here, which was awesome. So yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that was great. Uh, that, was, that was so <laughs> cool to see you like. It was wild. I remember the first time seeing you outside of the house because I was like, Bowie, I've just been watching you on a television for I four know. months. And we freaking know each other. And so. we know each other. So it was so weird to be like, okay. And then like you're like, I'm like, okay, come over to my apartment. And then I see you for the first time. I'm like, this feels weird because I've just been watching you on this TV. Right, Like, here's my living room. There's the TV I've been watching you on for four months. That is weird. Isn't that crazy? Yeah, it is weird. It's such a I weird thing. I was doing thing. shout outs quite often. Yeah, the shout outs were great. We caught those shout outs okay, a good. lot. I remember posting about them and stuff like that. And um, what? But, so what? Like, what's your favorite memory? What do you think? From like, is there something like a takeaway from the house, like a moment or anything that happened that you were like? It's weird because I'm out now. It feels like all a big blur and a dream. And I'm like, did I even do that? Yeah. But like things like the there were some really funny moments in the house. Like I'm because I was tired a lot, so like crying, laughing, like trying to stupid things like trying to play left handed pool and <laughs> just being really terrible. I don't know if they showed that, but I was like crying, laughing. Cameron fell on the floor. He was laughing so hard. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you do make some good bonds. I had a great time with Corey yeah. and America, like and Cameron, Red, um, you know, heaps of people in the house. So like really good laughs. Jag and Matt in the pressure cooker. I don't know if they showed it, but um, they had to go to the toilet. Oh, I didn't see this part. Um, so they might have ducked out of the live feeds. Oh, my gosh. Um, but, yeah, they had to pee. And but they had already lost? They had no, already, they were still They standing, were still standing. Holding. Did and they have to? Jag was in a chicken suit. So he just peed in the suit? So he had we to could try and take the suit. Oh, he had to like. Oh, I thought you meant Took like the they suit. just like decided to pee dark, themselves. So we couldn't see, but we weren't sure what the live feeds could see. I was crazy because we it was pitch black. Oh my gosh! So you're saying that they literally and they're like, were, I have to go to the toilet because we went told, oh, it's going to be cold. We went told you had to eat before nothing. You Obviously. got nothing. You're just there and then yeah. and then yeah. I was wondering like what you do for the bathroom if you yeah. go to the bathroom. I was like, there's no way I'm doing that. P.S. I will be leaving this comp. Plus, I did one. I was going to. You don't want to win anyway. that one anyways. <laughs> yeah, it's like why would I want to do that? Yeah. So wow. Um, yeah, and you could just hear the splash. <laughs> And I was crying. I can't wait to ask him about this. Also, yeah, Matt didn't want to hit the screen, like because there was a screen in there. And oh, yeah, I don't know how much I can talk about with that. Okay, anyway, but right. it was basically yeah, it was funny. Oh I, my I, I gosh, I'm not talking about it. But yeah, it was 
funny. I cannot wait to ask Jag about this <laughs> because I had no idea. I guess I didn't realize, obviously, the, the cameras were in night mode. But for us, you don't know how dark that means it actually is. I'm like, Pitch is there a black. little bit of light? Like, no, can you see can't. anything at all? Like, nothing. Nothing. Wow. And I was like, within the first few minutes, because it was scary verse, so things that were scary were going to be happening. I remember that, yeah. So yeah. I was like, oh, what are they going to be doing? Like, have people go, boo! Like, and I was like, Yeah, I'm like, not, grab you? Yeah. Oh, that would and be I, terrifying. I was like, I'm not down for that. Um, and then when I saw them bring out the snakes, I was like, mate, snakes? Can you <laughs> give a shit? I'm from Australia. You think I care about snakes? <laughs> yeah, I like, I'll happily look at the snakes. It's something to watch, at least. It I was, was gonna so say, boring. They just had you, like, looking at snakes. I was like, I, I could stare. Like, I don't love snakes, but yeah. I could stare at them. Exactly. Like, and then, um, yeah, so I was like, this is boring. This is so boring. I'm just standing here. I didn't. We didn't know what the time was, nothing. So when I got oh out and found out it was 5 a.m., we'd gone in at, 7 p.m. or something. Oh, my God. I was like, you are freaking kidding me. But did you feel like you feel exhausted? You feel tired, obviously, right? Like yeah. that's your kind of way of knowing that you've been there for a while because I feel like your body at some point, like you're used to going to bed probably around at least 2 in the morning, 3 in the morning yeah. latest. So then if you're up till 5, there's got to be a little bit of your like… It wasn't tired for me, but like Jag fell asleep. Wow. Well, at least he said he did. We should find that out. We should. Find I don't know if he threw sure. that either. Um, I don't think he could throw it because he was a target a lot. So. Wait, who won the pressure cooker? Cameron. Oh, Cam won that one. Yeah, of course. And Cam did. then Izzy came into the bedroom and goes, "Your boy won." That's and right. Was like, that was when she did was they doing show the, that. Yep. Because oh. she was so mad. And I was like, "What do you mean, my boy?" Yeah. Like, oh god. Oh yeah, I remember all that. Yeah, going so back to crazy. <laughs> but yeah, other funny moments. Um, I don't know. I can't remember. It's all bloody blur. But and like um, you said, you haven't watched it back, so it's not like you have anything fresh in your memory because this is now like it's like someone asking me like, "What was your favorite memory from the summer tour that I did with Jack?" Yeah, and you're like, like, I don't know. Uh, it was forever ago. Now it feels like forever ago. Yeah, I think getting to final three was a big achievement um, for sure. Like it was just we just felt like all the problems have now gone. Of course, I then had the next problem of trying to get to final two, but. Yeah. Also, for people going, Wah. she didn't want to get, f didn't want to win the game. She was happy to final three. No, you bloody idiots! <laughs> of course, I wanted to win. Yes, I had my strategy. I was working on Jag, and um, but I also didn't want him to take me just for the and do something that he would regret after. So, yeah, I was. Yeah. A, I'm not a sore loser. I freaking came out. I was happy because I'm used to playing sport and yeah. you don't mope around. People who mope around haven't played sport before. So I was like, yay, I don't care. Yeah, Good on Jag for you making were, a difficult decision. And you were celebrating being top three. Like I think at that point, like I would just consider it a win also yeah. because I'd be like, I don't like out of six, what, there were 16 people in the house? Yeah, seven, 17 think, once they yeah. added Suri, right? Yeah. You got to top three. Like that's already, like I said, to me, that's a win yeah. in itself. And like you have you know, like I've said, like you have like your moral compass. So yes, you're playing a game, but you still have your like, yeah. your morals of like, I'm you're, not gonna you're still something. not going to like throw someone under the bus or do something that no. you morally don't feel comfortable with. And we knew that about you. That's right. And a lot of people have complimented me on that when I got out in person, which is interesting. Like they're like, oh my God, you played such a, a really pleasant game. We're like, we thank you for that. So I was like, oh, thank God. Yeah. Also, Jag made a really difficult decision to not take me meant he really thought he was going to lose. By taking Matt. Yeah, but he was prepared to do it because he felt it was the right thing to do for his community and everything. And I was like, how could I be mad at that? Yeah. I, I kind I, of had suggested that. So It's honestly, totally agree. Exactly. So, so wow. It is what it is, people. Amazing. I mean, listen. Suck it up. Again, <laughs> Bowie, Jane, top three. Final three in Big Brother 25. Yeah. That's insane. And I know, crazy. Uh, and you just happen to be one of my best friends. And yes. I was just like, I'd always be like, I was I was telling you this when I was on tour. Like, I'd have people being like, wait, you know Bowie Jane? Like, <laughs> and they're like, we're Team Bowie and You're stuff like, coming up to the show. Why do I know Bowie Jane? <laughs> <laughs> I was also like, where have you been? Yes, I know Bowie. Like, <laughs> so clearly you haven't been listening to Bays Behind the Beats, yeah. I see. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Called or out. <laughs> watching any of our Instagram stories. Yeah, exactly. Oh, man. But yeah, I'm just happy that you're out and that you. You got, you know, I don't want to say got through that experience, but like you're out of it and I feel like you had a good time. Like that's something that you're going to look back on forever. Yeah. At the time it was fun, um, stressful, but fun. But now I'm out. I'm like, woohoo. You're like, I'm out. Bye. Yeah. <laughs> See you later, people. <laughs> and also for the people like going, oh, do you always smile? And like people in the house are saying, oh, you smile too much. You, are you, you're not like this outside the house. Dude. Yeah. Yes, you are. Yes, I am. No, that was the other thing that I was so 
like it upset me because I was like, I can't wait till they get out of the house and just see that like, oh my, Bo is not being fake. This is just Bowie. She just <laughs> is happy. She smiles. Yeah. I was like, what? Like, and also, what's so wrong with that? I know. What's like? Can you believe that that's something that they had to? I just imagine. I mean, listen. I can only imagine what people are feeling when you're just sitting in a house doing nothing. Yeah. You have nothing to talk about. You have nothing yeah. when you have no games or anything going on, and you're just sitting in a house for that long. And they're trying to create rifts, and they're prepared to lie. So. And I think that's the thing is like a big part of their strategy could be to get people to dislike you. Yeah. You know what I mean? So I I can see that side of it, but. I will say there's still no room in life for bullying someone. No. That's one thing that I was not okay with yeah. is I don't care how you want to play a game. I don't care how you want to get people on your team, but don't use bullying as a tactic. Exactly. And Jess stuck up for me online. Sure Got did. into a couple of fights. So anyone want to throw some fists at me? Come at me. And we know Jess does this. You, you all know that. Yeah. You will lose. <laughs> <laughs> Even in real life, in person. Yes, she yes. will also do that. And that's oh, why we're man. friends. Exactly. Uh, all right, Bowie. Well, I'm so happy that you're out of the house. Congrats again Thank on being you. final three. And everyone, uh, just tune in. We've got a bunch of new episodes coming out of Base Behind the Beats coming yes. out soon now that she's out of the house. And can't wait to, for everyone to hear those episodes. Yes, and I'm looking forward to chatting to you about your UK tour Jack's gigs, all of the above, because I don't know what's bloody going on. That's true. We actually have to do our own little chinwag catch up for me because, again, you've been in the house the whole time. So exactly. We've got a lot of catch up on. So everyone tune in. You're going to have way more episodes. Follow us on Instagram, Babes Behind the Beats. We are on Twitter, Babes Behind Beat, The Beat. Babe. Well, I don't know. You'll find us okay, somewhere. Find us. Also find Mostly Instagram. Mostly right? Instagram. And uh, yeah. Babe behind the... I can't remember. Yeah. <laughs> but we, you can't, you've been in a house for four months. I can't expect Dude. you to remember what everything is I'm right like, now. what are my passwords? Yeah. 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 It's crazy. Oh, my God. Oh, well, thanks for having me on our show. Thank you for being here. So happy that you're out. <laughs> and for those who don't know Jess Bowen, professional touring drummer, I talked a lot about her in the house. Go check her out. She is absolutely one of the best drummers in the world. She's in Count Me In documentary and, like, was heavily featured in that with who? Uh, Chad Smith from the Red Hot Chili Peppers, yep. Cindy Blackman Santana, obviously of Santana, um, and uh, Stephen Perkins of Jane's Addiction, and then there's all these other drummers. You know, the drummer of Queen, drummer, of, you know, uh, the Police. It's it's on Netflix. If you she, like, documentaries. she is one of the best drummers in the world. Drums with her own band, The Somerset. So go check her out, and we will chat with you all next week. <laughs>